Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we are looking at the default game engine. What you see in front of you, this is the default engine. It is super clean, all the inclusive in there, so everything you could need to create your game is here. You've got a full world editing environment, uh, and you have scripting, and you have scripting in the form of Lua. Now some people are going to find that very off-putting. I personally, I like Lua. Uh, I also find that the way that the default game engine does things is a little bit different to some of the other engines out there. There is a learning curve, but once you kind of grok what they're doing, you are really going to appreciate it. But the reason why we were talking about Default is specifically about this. Now this is Default 1.9.7 Beta. And the key thing about 1.9.7 Beta is this right here. You now have C Sharp support. Now I've got to put into perspective exactly what that means because it's not exactly C Sharp is a peer to Lua. It's an extension system, but you could create your game entirely using extensions if you so wish to do. And I'll show you how all of this works in just a second. Now there are some benefits and downsides to this. First off, there are performance upsides. We're going to see some of those results in profiling in just a minute. Uh, but you also now are going to have to come in here and build your game. Now this is, I've done it before. So uh, it happened immediately, but the first time it took about a minute to compile your code. So this is not scripting. It is compiling these extensions behind the scene. Now, one thing you might notice from this running example is well, C Sharp is not alone. There's actually already Zig and C++ support for default extensions. So if you want to use C++ or Zig or now C Sharp with your default game engine, you can. And we'll get an idea of exactly how this works. So this is all being loaded uh, through this main GUI script. And basically it is loading an encoder and it is loading the encoder based off the type of encoder. So you see here, you got a number Zig, C++, C Sharp, Lua. Uh, it's multiple different decoders are all loaded in and it's gonna pick which one to use. So how do these decoders come about being? Well, you will notice over here, we have multiple different folders here. So we have here, encoder CPP. This is a C++ implementation of the, uh, the extension. So you can see here, we're using something called the DM SDK, which is what you use to create module extensions inside of the default game engine. Well, you will now notice the C sharp here. So basically just add it into your project like so, add the source file. There's also this little manifest, but the manifest is, it looks like it was copy and pasted to be honest, super simple. So basically all you're doing is you're naming your extension. And then inside of your extension right here, you can see this is typical C sharp support. Now you'll notice there's no uh, code highlighting inside of uh, the editor in this case. So you're not getting markup or anything. You're gonna to wanna to edit an external tool like Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code or whatever your preferred editor is. But you can see here, basically you're implementing a class and then you're going to override a number of different methods. So this is the, the method you're exposing, the ROT13 uh, algorithm. And then you've got add, test the garbage collection, uh, get info, and then uh, all of these are getting registered. So here you're gonna see extension initialize and you're basically exposing. So you're basically creating a Lua mapping at this point in time. So you're adding uh, this new Lua implementation with ROT13, add, get info, test of the garbage collector. Uh, and those are all being mapped to over here, the, the values over here. So the, the properties or the, the names of your functions. So you see add is Add. So you do have a little bit of setup work to do. Uh, all these bindings are generated automatically, by the way. So each new version of uh, default should just work, which is quite nice. And then see here, you've got a couple of different callbacks in the life cycle of your program. So here you can see finalize. So when it is shut down, this will be called update. So every frame, this will be called. Uh, and then we have a couple of other options and we just basically map those back. So the initialization calls to the initialize method, finalize calls to finalize, uh, like so. And then you've got an update and you can even have it handling events. Now in this case, they null it out, but you could have uh, an event handler uh, so that your extension can respond to events in the event loop or you know user input or whatever. They don't do that for this particular example, but that is it. That is the extent of your creating an extension here. So there is some administrative work to map your functions that you want to expose back to Lua. And then you could just basically use this as if it was a Lua object. So you see here, uh, back in the script, for example, uh, they're just setting up this encoder. But when it ultimately comes down to actually running the encoder, they're just calling it like any other Lua function. So uh, here you can see self.sum or decoder here dot add decoder dot rot 13. So we go back over here, you're going to notice those methods are basically what we are exposing out. Uh, so you've got an add method. So there's the rot 13 method. Uh, and then there's an add here somewhere, there's add. And the same thing is applying, by the way, if you're interested in using Zig, 
Same concept. Now, interestingly enough, Zig is getting syntax highlighting for some reason. I do not understand why. Uh, there's also the straight Lua implementation, so you can get an idea of how this would look using Lua code if you were interested. And then, of course, we have the C++ implementation, which again, is getting syntax highlighting. So I wonder if C Sharp syntax highlighting will be coming soon, because it does seem like they have it for the rest of them already. Again, C Sharp support was just added in this beta. So this is going to be a lot like if you use the Godot language. You can write Godot using C++, but you're basically creating your game objects as modules. In this case, you would be writing as C Sharp, but, or C++ or Zig, but you are creating your game modules as extensions. So if you are interested in learning more, and I highly suggest that you should be, because the Fold Game Engine is one of those underrated gems out there. Uh, it is available at thefold.com. Now, this is not technically open source, but it is source available, and it is under a foundation that basically mandates that they must leave the code available. So it doesn't conform to an open source license, but it basically has all of the benefits you could expect uh, from a traditional open source project. It is super cross-platform, including, as you can see here, uh, you've got platform support, such as, I don't know if Xbox happened. It looks like it did. Uh, check marks there now. Uh, Windows, Steam, HTML, iOS, macOS, Android, Switch, PlayStation 4 and 5, and so on. So it is very capable in terms of the project, uh, the the platforms that it can target. Uh, super simple to work with. I didn't even have to do anything to get these external tool chains working, but just be aware, you do have to do a build if you use the extension system, but that's about the only difference. Uh, it's turnkey, uh, free, completely free, no cost, no licensing, no royalties, nothing, and it is production ready. It is being used to make several shipped games. Uh, it is a really, really cool game engine. I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't already. Uh, additionally, uh, and this is one of those things, I don't get to cover Default very often on the channel, or as often as I would like, because they do their development on Sprint. So basically these things happen, and they, they do a new release every like four weeks or something like that. It'd be basically, uh, they, they don't do enough generally in this release for me to cover them on the channel, but they often release so frequently that people that actually use it get all of these nice little updates, which is sweet. So you see here, a number of other things were added in this particular release, uh, including uniforms in shaders, which is ironically, uh, the Godot 4.4 release just did that as well. Uh, so you see, there are a number of updates to these releases as well. But the most impressive thing here is again, this right here, the default C Sharp support. There are some details about it. So this is still considered experimental and it is still under development. It is only available in the well, 1.9.7 beta, uh, but there are zips available for it. Uh, and then the project I am using is actually this one right here. Just cloned it from uh, GitHub. Just load it in, uh, project build, and you are good to go. And then you can basically just start writing your own extensions. I told you earlier on a little bit about benchmarks. So is there actually an advantage to using C Sharp over uh, Lua or C++ over Lua, etc.? And here you can see what happens with the build size. It gets bigger. Uh, so the default build is that size on, so we'll just use macOS as an example. Uh, it looks like C Sharp adds about two megabytes to the overall size. And then in terms of performance factor, uh, using the ROT13 algorithm, uh, again, I'll just stick to Mac OS. I'm not cherry picking. It just happens to be the one on the left. Uh, you're seeing Lua takes 0.8, whereas C++ takes 0 0.08. So you're talking a factor of 10 times faster for doing it in C++ over Lua. So there definitely are speed advantages here. And then you're going to see C Sharp is somewhat in the middle ground. Now, interestingly enough, it is very diverse on different platforms. So if you look at Android, Lua is... Uh, quite slow, but the advantage to C Sharp isn't quite as good. But then you look at Win64 and the advantage is very profound. So it does seem to be very platform dependent. And here you can see on the ad algorithm example, uh, less of a gain because uh, it's, well, less of an algorithm. Now, interesting there, you're also seeing the disparity between C++ and C Sharp is um, less. So uh, what you're seeing here, let's just talk about like a typical algorithm. Uh, you could see up to 10 times performance advantage to going to C++, whereas you're seeing about a four times performance advantage going to C Sharp. So it does let you like broaden your toolbox of languages when working with the Fold. And of course, you can do all of your game scripting and logic in Lua. Uh, and then the more complicated or performance stuff 
in C Sharp or C++ or Zig. Uh, and if you really wanted to, I suppose you, you could probably do just about everything in uh, extensions. It's just going to be a kind of a sloppy way to work. Again, it's kind of similar to using Godot. GDScript is an easier way to glue everything together. But if you really, really wanted to, you could write everything in uh, modules using, um, again, C++ or Rust or other languages, etc. This seems to be a similar approach to that. Uh, in terms of uh, why they they, did, they didn't want to do this, and then they changed their mind on it. Uh, the big thing is they are not moving away from Lua as the primary scripting language. C Sharp support will be added as a new language for extensions. It will not impact the engine unless you use the C Sharp extension in your project, which is nice. So basically, if you are not using C Sharp, ignore this. It won't cost you anything. Uh, it will come at a price if you use it, uh, and that is executable size, executable size, runtime performance, etc. Now, the runtime performance is not a price. That's a boon. So they're, they're wording that kind of interestingly. Uh, and then for C Sharp itself, it's relatively minor change since the extension system was already in place for the other languages. Uh, SDK will be kept in sync by generating the C Sharp bindings. Uh, this will keep the bindings up to date with minimal effort. So the Fold Foundation has previously been against adding C Sharp support into Fold, but they changed their mind because studios and developers continue to request C Sharp support. C Sharp support has been scoped down to extensions only, so it didn't take them a lot of work and hasn't had a lot of impact on the fold itself. The core engine will not be impacted. The C Sharp APIs can be kept in sync with minimal effort because they are generated. And C Sharp support will be based on .NET 9 with uh, native AOT, thus generating stack libraries uh, that the existing build pipeline can link against. One of the things you want to know about, though, uh, right now there is an issue with .NET 9 AOT and Linux. So there is no Linux support yet for C Sharp extensions with this particular beta, uh, but that is something that is being worked on. So uh, if you want, the example I downloaded is available. So this is the, the example we used earlier on when we saw it in action. By the way, if you like what they're doing, go give them a star. Uh, definitely appreciate their work. By the way, all of the default code itself is up here. So the fold is, again, it's not technically open source, but it has most of the advantages of an open source project. Do be sure to check out their license. It's not egregious. There's nothing really bad there. They just put some protectionist language in there that is not OSI compliant. Uh, and again, you can see here, decent number of contributors to it. Good activity on the project. It is a popular one with 4.6K stars. If you like it, give them a couple more. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a default, specifically uh, default 1.9 seven beta or something like that. But do know this is the version where they added C sharp support to the fold. And this is in my humble opinion, lovely, but let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.